All right, so this video is all about expectations, boundaries, and structures. So we're gonna talk about why expectations, boundaries, and structures are so important, and how to do each and what to do about pushback. This is gonna be another lesson with some homework. So expectation boundaries and structure are really important for kids when you're changing their meal times or when you're just eating or starting out with your youngest eaters. But especially, especially if this is something that you're implementing with your family and this is a big change for you. So this video will be really important. So for some families, the new strategies implemented in this course are gonna be huge and it can help to help your kids adjust easier if you tell them what's coming and what to expect. So clarifying the boundaries when it comes to meal times will help you implement the division of responsibility because you will be discussing with your kids which responsibilities are yours and which responsibilities are there. So remember, division of responsibility is you provide, child decides. So structure at mealtime is extremely important, especially for kids who have sensory or behavior struggles um, or who have like an unreliable schedule in other parts of their lives. So we're gonna talk about mealtime schedules in the next video. I originally had it all together, but then the video was getting too long, so separate video. So we want meal times to be a predictable constant in your kiddo's daily routine. This doesn't mean that you can never deviate from their routine by going out to dinner or doing something fun and exciting for a meal, but we generally want kids to know what to expect at their meal, where to expect their meal, and how to expect their meal. So we're gonna discuss how to implement expectations, boundary, and structure. So let's start with expectations for the kiddos. The first thing that you want to do is be transparent with your kids. So tell them that mom and dad or mom and mom or however your household looks um, that you're learning about how to make dinner time fun and how to help them try new foods so for kids beyond the toddler years tell them that you observe things like temper tantrums or arguing at meal times let them know that you want meal times to be fun and you want to help them explore new and fun foods and we're going to change a few rules at meal time that's it. I mean, it doesn't have to be a particularly long conversation or a big family meeting or anything intimidating like that we just wanna let them know that changes are coming so nobody is blindsided by any of the adjustments that you're making. Now, it's certainly possible that your kiddo won't really understand what you mean with this conversation, and that's okay. You can always remind them of this conversation at a later time by saying something like, remember mom talked with you about how we're gonna meet, make some changes at meal times? Well, today is number one of that. So the goal with this discussion is positivity, honesty, and, sim and simplicity. So, now that we've kind of got the expectations or the boundaries there, let's move on to the expectations for you as a parent. Um, so we've already discussed some expectations in the intro to the intuitive eating and the division of responsibility videos. So just like with your kiddos, the expectations I'm gonna give you are honest and simples. Simple, not simples. So don't expect change to happen overnight. That's expectation number one. When you implement these strategies, it's not gonna like immediately change at the next meal time. So I need you to be okay with gradual change. This is really important and the speed of this change really depends on your kiddo and their abilities and their comfort level and if they have any special needs outside of meal times. It's okay to slowly implement the strategies to give your family time to adjust, especially if anyone in your family struggles with change or struggles with their relationship with food. So for an adult who struggles with their relationship with food, this might be a longer adjustment period for you and that's totally okay. You need to do what works best for your family. This course is designed to be done over several weeks so you can implement each task before moving on to the next. The way you're going to get the most out of this course is not to watch all the videos at one time, but if you do, I encourage you to come back to each video as you're going through the content and really ready to implement each new thing. So next expectation for the parents, prepare for the possibility of temper tantrums. Change is hard and outbursts are normal when changing rules around mealtimes. This doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong and this doesn't mean you're doing a bad job. My kids have temper tantrums or meltdowns at mealtime sometimes, and that's just part of their temperament and part of being a kid. So if your kiddo is struggling at mealtimes, it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. Change is hard for everybody, especially kids. So next expectation for parents, be okay with skipped meals. So you might have a tiny human protest the rule changes by like refusing to eat a meal 
or maybe two. And that's okay, unless your child has diagnosed medical condition or a significant developmental delay or a pediatric feeding disorder, it's really unlikely that any harm is gonna come from skipping a meal. But if you do think it's possible that there might be something else going on, then skipping a meal may be an indication that your child could use some extra help from a pediatric dietitian or like a speech therapist or just their pediatrician in general. So if we implement these new rules, structures, and activities, and the kiddo says, and I'm not eating that, or I'm not doing that, try responding in a super calm manner saying, that's okay, you don't have to eat what you don't want to. And that's all that's for dinner. Don't forget the next time food will be served, we'll be at breakfast. And then leave it at that. Again, remember it's your child's decision and their responsibility to choose whether they're gonna eat and how much of it. So you're just giving them all the information for them to make an informed decision with the feelings that they're having at the moment. So you can also try now if they skip a meal, that was kind of option one, and that's what I do in my house, but um, you can also try saving their dinner in the refrigerator and getting it back out for them if they're hungry again later. So again, barring any medical conditions, when your kid is hungry enough, they're gonna eat, but there are medical conditions that would cause a child to not eat even if they are hungry. So if you suspect that this is a possibility or you're concerned about it, please reach out to a medical professional. We're gonna have a whole video on pediatric feeding disorders and like the red flags to look for those. So stay tuned for that video. But I see this situation all the time and I see that the ones who have the most difficulty with skipped meals is the parents watching their child not eat. It's not as hard on the kiddo, trust me. So um, think on this, think, can you be okay with your kid refusing a meal? Um, so the basic idea here is again, you choose what you wanna serve and that your kiddo can choose if they wanna eat it. So if your child chooses not to eat, remember that that's their decision and their responsibility bucket. And in order to uphold the division of responsibility, it's important to respect that decision and allow them to learn what the consequences of that decision are, which will probably being hungry, be being hungry before breakfast or maybe super hungry at breakfast. So if you want more details on how to handle dinner refusal, especially when you're just starting out with responsive feeding, check out my FAQ playlist on YouTube. I have a whole video answering this question if you want more details or more reassurance or just more information in general on this question. So um, again, another side note, if you notice your child is losing weight, it's really important to bring up with your pediatrician or your registered dietitian nutritionist. This is something that needs to be addressed in a one-on-one -on -one appointment because it does involve personalized medical nutrition therapy and advice. So. All right, let's review, review boundaries. Pretty simple. We wanna set kitchen boundaries. We want the kitchen to be the parent's domain, including the fridge and the pantry, wherever the food is stored. We want the kiddos to ask for permission before getting any food out by themselves. So this means kids do not have free reign of the pantry, of the fridge, of snacks. After your kid gets older, you can give more freedom, like a free snack drawer with pre-cut veggies, pre-washed fruits or cheese sticks or any other snacks you want when they have shown the ability to feel comfortable and adhere to the division of responsibility, and when they have demonstrated the ability to listen to their body cues and eat within the boundaries that you've set. So there isn't really an age where I would give more freedom. It's more of like a maturity responsibility level. So if they struggle with these boundaries, it might not be the right time to give more freedom. So for example, we do want kids to experience what it's like to be full at meal and snacks, and also what it's like to be hungry before meal and snacks. So being a grazer and always eating outside of meal and snack time or even sneaking foods, that's a sign that your child may not be ready for additional freedom in the kitchen. So if you implement the free snack drawer and you notice your kid is filling up on snacks so they're not hungry for a meal, then maybe we need to unimplement the free snack drawer. Being hungry at a meal is going to increase the likelihood that they'll try something new. So we do want our kids to go into meals hungry and ready to eat. I'm not talking famished, but it's normal to be hungry before a meal. If your kid was not a good candidate for the free snack drawer, is too young for this, then it shouldn't be acceptable for them to get food between meals and snacks without asking. The kitchen is parent's domain and they do not go and start to eat without talking or asking permission first. Although the kitchen is the parent's domain, I do want you to encourage your kids to help and participate in cooking as much as possible. I have a video on this later too. 
Um, so the reason we want to establish it as your domain is not only to prevent unrestricted snacking, it's also a safety issue to prevent them from using any utensils that might be dangerous like knives or getting a hold of any sort of choking hazards or allergens that may also be dangerous. So something I want to clarify here, if you're implementing intuitive eating as an adult, part of that process is having unrestricted access to food. However, adult brains and child brains are different. So we do not give kids unrestricted access to food at all times because they don't have the regulation ability and forethought and planning abilities that adults have. So when you hear about being intuitive, intuitive eater, you hear about unrestricted access to food, that's for adults, not for kids. We do give kids unrestricted access to foods provided by parents at set times. So there's kind of the difference. They still have unrestricted access to foods just within the boundaries that the parents have set. So again, there's our little difference for intuitive eating for adults and for kids. All right, structure at meal times. This should be pretty brief. We want kids to expect in general how their meals will be served. So I recommend keeping the eating environment as consistent as possible while you're implementing the division of responsibility for the first time. For example, eat at the table as a family around the same time every day. We're gonna introduce the idea of novelty later in the course, which will give some variety to meal times, but this variety is generally going to occur at the kitchen table as a family. Basically, we just want kids to generally expect consistency at meal times. So whether it be you're sitting at the coffee table, you're sitting at the kitchen table, same general time of the day, consistency is important here because if we're switching up expectations and we're also switching up a bunch of other stuff at meal times, it's really confusing and overwhelming. So the last piece of this structure portion should be implementing the division of responsibility by at all meals and snacks by all adults, all adults in the household. So this is why your homework from the last videos were really important. We wanna make sure that all adults in the household are on the same page and are implementing the division of responsibility in a very similar, if not the same way. If you have a beloved grandparent or other trusted adult watching your child at mealtimes, I highly encourage you to have them work through this course with you so that they're on the same page as well. 